Hey guys, and welcome to another video. <laughs> and you may be wondering why I am playing Daisy. And I just want to talk, you can hear the zombies outside. I just want to talk about how, why a game like this is so successful. And kind of contrast that to uh, some other titles. see a zombie out there. So, I've been playing a little bit of Daisy. I've heard a lot about it, and I, I kind of picked it up a while back. Played it a, a tiny bit. I haven't really got into it too much. And uh, the reason I'm demonstrating this is to really talk about decision-making and tactical shooters. So, I was playing uh, Dragon Rising and I did demonstrate the full first mission for you guys. And in Dragon Rising, the first mission is really the only one where uh, you do have objectives, but it's open world. And I frequently talked about uh, Ghost Recon. Uh, so, in this video, I just want to talk about the importance of decision making in tactical shooters. getting away from the town here a little bit. Right now I'm, uh, you can see on the lower right hand corner, I'm uh, pretty hungry at this point. I'm looking for food in this town, but really haven't seen anything but zombies so far. So Daisy is a lot like the, you know, the show The Walking Dead, obviously. Uh, and it is a survival horror adventure. I'll show you where I'm there I am on the map next to Google Bow. So it's in Chinaris and surprisingly uh, there's a lot of people that play this. In fact I saw on it was either Reddit or some forum where they discuss um, that most of the Arma 2 and Arma 3 servers are things like Epoch, Daisy, Breaking Point, uh, Altus Life, and a number of other free roam uh, titles. Let's see, this guy's coming towards me. So the zombies will actually hear that. <laughs> if they hear sound, they'll come towards you. I think he was the only one, though. So in Dragon Rising, the first mission is really, um, for the most part, open world. You have, you know, the two main objectives, and then you can either leave the area or you can continue to recon and take out other other objectives. And that's where Dragon Rising really, really shines. So. I've heard it said a lot, you know, that first mission is really a, uh, it's kind of a, a, f a false indication of what the rest of the game is like, because the rest of it, you're constricted with time limits and various objectives that you have to complete. And they throw some pretty impossible stuff at you, like um, one mission, there's a hill, and there's a, a bunch of AT teams and MG guns, kind of like that hill right there. Uh, all over four to five positions. Uh, and so naturally, I wanted to uh, flank right, and there was a beach area. So I wanted to go around it and come in from the rear and take out all the, the MGs and the uh, AT teams. Well, <laughs> there's a time limit, and they're going to they're gonna send in the friendly tanks up a road. Uh, and if you don't take out those AT t teams in time, your tanks are going anyway. Uh, so it's a thing where it's not realistic uh, if there were actually, you know, tanks and you, need, you needed to take out those teams. 
you know, HQ would more than likely wait until that threat was mitigated by a special operations team, aerial, you know, bombardment, precision airstrikes, artillery, whatever the case may be, and then he would send the uh, the tanks in. So a lot of the campaign feels rushed, and just you go from objective to obje objective. Now the Arma uh, campaigns can be like that to a degree. So there's a secret uh, mod where it's just objectives throughout the island, and it'll it'll quick save, you know, after you complete those objectives. So getting to the talking point of this video, uh, why is a mod like Daisy so popular. Like what is it about it? And um, I was thinking about it, and pretty much it's the decision making. So how does it apply to any game, uh, and specifically tactical shooters? The reason I believe ta uh, Daisy is so popular is because you write your own story. You uh, make your own decisions, and those decisions have consequences. So. If you decide to go into a town, maybe you have to because you're you're hungry or you, you know you need water. Um, you can scout the town first, look for you know how many zombies, the amount of ammo that you have, and you have to decide if you're going to do that or not. Of course, if you get killed in the process or you're successful in that, you find food and you get, you make it out alive. It's rewarding because your decisions were able to affect the outcome. So, in Dragon Rising, that first mission really shines. I mean, you really um, are able to, you know, leave the mission at any point, and you're able to pursue other objectives, and it's completely open world, so you can place your teams wherever you want. And you can uh, approach objectives. So Ghost Recon is very much like that, where you're just given, you know, four or five objectives, and you can approach this however you want. Um, on the other extreme, a game like Call of Duty, for instance, it's like a roller coaster where you're just on rails and you're on, uh, you know, you're going for the experience. It's a quick adrenaline rush, and you know, in eight hours or so, when you beat the campaign, that's it. You're, you know, it's done. You might you might ride that roller coaster two or three times, but for the most part, you know, that's not something that you're going to do all the time. Uh, Dragon Rising felt like a train ride through the countryside. You know, you're still on, uh, except for the first mission, you're still on rails, but you're able to, you know, maybe stop at some uh, stations and do some sightseeing, maybe look at some scenery and things like that. A true open world shooter, or any game, enables the player to have decisions. And in a tactical shooter, that's going to be your kit, maybe your weapon loadout for that specific, you know, mission. Uh, are you going to use suppressed weapons? Are you are you going to use, uh, you know, long range? Uh, what kind of scope do you want, etc. Um, I kind of cleared out this area a little bit earlier. There's a guy right there. And I hear a guy to my left. Uh-oh. Thought he was dead, and of course he heard that gunshot. So, in my opinion, you know the reason why these are so successful is because it gives the player complete. Uh, freedom of choice. And I would hope to see a tactical shooter in the future. That incorporates freedom of choice like you see here. Every decision in Daisy is uh, has consequences, whether they're good or they're bad. Conscious. So you can see I just respawn here. And, uh, you know, direct consequence of me choosing to go into that village 
was uh, was deaf. I ended up <laughs> getting eaten by the zombies. So, anyways, you know, the, the point is, uh, decisions are extremely important, and freedom of choice, uh, whether that means your kit, uh, style of weapons, um, and the reason I really love Ghost Recon again is because you're just given your four or five objectives, and and you can approach those in whatever manner you choose. Uh, so, you know, for upcoming titles at Ground Branch, um, I would hope that you would have that open world. And I, and I think so far it's demonstrated that that's what it's going to be. So uh, that's why I'm kind of <laughs> showing this DayZ model here. And it is one of the most successful uh, games, uh, mods, you know, that has ever existed. So, all right, hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Burn around.